All right, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm here to uh, walk you through the course outline for two different courses, uh, Linguistics 560, which is known as Statistics for Linguistics Research, and Linguistics 660, which is known as Quantitative Modeling of, of Linguistic Data. Uh, those are both uh, kind of fancy names for um, what is basically the same course, uh, one at the undergraduate level, one at the graduate level. There's small differences between them, but basically uh, we're going to present the same content or I'm going to present the same content um, for both courses, depending on, you know, not depending on who you are, basically. But if you're in this class, great, uh, you're in the right spot. Uh, and like I said, I just want to walk through this course outline uh, today. This is the night before we get started tomorrow morning. Uh, so I need to get this up and rolling. So if I make any boo-boos as I go through, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, I, I may have already made one or two, who knows. Anyways, I am Steve Winters. Uh, I'll be your guide on this little journey. Um, and actually, I think uh, the first thing I should say as I get started on this is that this is a class that is uh, designed for uh, linguists, like majors in linguistics and graduate students in linguistics who are um, interested in doing their own research in linguistics and want to know how to do the quantitative analysis side of um, the process of research. So uh, I am somebody who has some experiment, or sorry, experience in running experiments, gathering data from experiments, and also analyzing that data. I like data, I like math, I like numbers in general. Uh, so I'm kind of a good fit for this particular position, but I need to give you the caveat that I am not, a, you know, a formally trained statistician. Uh, I'm not an expert in that field by any means. Uh, I'm an expert. My specialty in linguistics is in phonetics, and in particular, I've run a lot of um, experiments in speech perception. Um, but uh, I've had to pick up the stats side of the business as I've gone along, uh, and I've... Uh, I took one course in grad school many years ago in 1998. You may hear a bit about that course as we go along because things have changed so much since then in terms of how we do stats um, in uh, the social science world. But uh, other than that, it's, I'm mostly self-taught. Uh, and for that reason, I will uh, let you know that um, there are people out there who know more about this than I do, not about how stats works with linguistics. There are, there are some, of course, but uh, people know more about stats than I do. Um, and I will also point out that when you do learn stats, there's a couple of um, things that come along with it. Number one, if you've taken a stats course, I find it's uh, helpful to take another stats course because it's complicated and kind of unusual. It's an unusual way to think about uh, the world, especially if you're used to thinking about it in sort of linguistics mode. Um, so uh, by all means, if you take this course, you, you may benefit from taking another stats course somewhere down the line or maybe, maybe even a third. Um, and it's also, we'll find that it's easy to misapply statistics. Uh, a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous in this field. Uh, and I think everybody um, in the linguistics world can, has been guilty of this at one point or another. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of getting, gonna get started um, with our journey in statistics and linguistics in this course. Uh, it's not gonna be all inclusive, unfortunately. I'm gonna try to teach you as much as I possibly can uh, in a relatively short time frame, three months, um, to kind of get you enabled to sort of function on your own, or at least know enough to be kind of dangerous out there um, with all the basic sort of techniques that we use uh, and a few more advanced ones as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully that isn't too much of a caveat because I think there is a lot to be learned in this class uh, and you will, if you stick with it, uh, learn quite a bit. Uh, and like I said, hopefully enough to be self-sufficient to some extent uh, in doing your own stats for your own research. That is the goal. Uh, right, so um, i say a little bit more about that goal uh, in these two paragraphs here in, in less wordy fashion, but I wanted to get the main point across. Uh, if you want to know just specific details about me, um, yeah, where you can find me in normal times is in Craigie Hall, C-122, and there's the address of the university in case you've never been there. I guess it's still possible that um, students in their second year at the university uh, now would never have been to the university, but, you know, things are hopefully getting better soon, although at the moment, I'm pretty sure the numbers for the virus are getting worse. But we'll talk a lot about the virus and how to analyze those numbers as we go along. We don't need to dwell on them now because we've been thinking about them way too much over the past year and a half already. My phone number when I am in my office is this, 220-7230. But the point is, um, normally I'm not in my office very often uh, in such that you would actually be able to contact me with this phone number. Uh, and right now I'm not gonna be there at all, basically. So don't call this number. 
Uh, it's much better to email me. That's a better way to get in touch with me. Uh, and that's my email address. And in fact, an even better way than that is to attend office hours, which are going to be held at um, what's supposed to be the uh, originally scheduled time for this class uh, from Tuesday and on Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 11. Uh, there's a Zoom link for that, and I will be there each one of those hours throughout the semester. Normally, not that many people show up to office hours. Sometimes a lot of people show up, but still, that's a good way to get in touch with me and get a uh, quick and direct ans answer to whatever questions you might uh, have about the um, about the course. Email uh, is your second best bet, uh, but there are times when I get kind of overwhelmed by email, and so it may take me a while to get back to you about that. In that case, it's fair to send me another email if you've been waiting a few days for a response, uh, and then that might kick me back into gear, but um, yeah, I'm just giving you fair warning because I'm trying to be honest at the beginning of this class. Uh, and I do wanna sort of not dwell too much on the negative. I do wanna focus on the positive as well. So uh, I will read over these two paragraphs I mentioned before. This course is an introduction to basic statistical concepts, methods of analysis, and quantitative modeling techniques with a focus on their application to the unique properties of language research and linguistic data. The objective of this course is to enable students of linguistics, like you, to develop the skills necessary to scientifically analyze the quantitative results of their own research. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add another caveat to that. That's the positive, is that, you know, you will become self-sufficient to at least some extent by doing this course, um, by taking this course, I guess I should say. Uh, there are some of you who are not uh, linguistic students. I, I know there are a couple of you from data science and other places, or if you maybe haven't taken linguistics before. Uh, and uh, I gave you permission to uh, enter this course for a variety of different reasons. Uh, I will say uh, you may find the linguistics parts of this course either baffling or challenging. Uh, and I apologize for that, but I, I guess I could do the Canadian thing and say sorry, but not sorry because uh, that's just the way the course is. So you're just gonna have to roll with it as we go. Uh, but if you have extra questions based on those parts of the class, you can always ask me um, or your classmates for that matter. Um, because I know there are a lot of talented students in this class who'd be happy to share their knowledge of linguistics with you. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna actually read this second paragraph because it's just formal stuff that we don't need to worry about. Uh, yeah, and the reason my phone number isn't here, by the way, is so I don't forget it the next time I teach this class when hopefully we will be able to meet in person. But for now, we're gonna meet uh, online and asynchronous, so you should be watching this video at your leisure at any time that works for you. I think you already know that, uh, but we're not gonna be meeting in person um, for a variety of different logistical and personal reasons. Um, not the least of which is that uh, a couple of our grad students are on different co continents. Uh, I know there's at least one in Africa and one in Asia, so isn't that fun? Um, we're here, or I'm here in North America, I guess we're here together in cyberspace, so I'm glad that the technology has made it possible to get together in this fashion. Uh, another aspect of technology in this course, we have a course web page. So I know a lot of you are um, kind of tuned into D2L for your courses. That's your main go-to source for information about your courses. Uh, I like having independent websites, so I'm sorry I'm not gonna use the D2L site all that much for this course. Primarily I'm gonna use it for communication. That's where I'll send emails through, but you don't even need to know that. Instead of that, uh, I have this um, homepage for the course here. I would bookmark this uh, web link uh, at your earliest convenience because you'll use it a lot and I'll refer you to it a lot. Uh, but it's clearly labeled the Linguistics 560-660 homepage. It's at ufclinguistics.org. And it's got a lot of links in here. So um, yeah, and uh, this being the night before we get started, there's not all these links have been updated, but there's a lot of information here that um, I'm gonna sort of uh, I still have from the last time I taught this course and it's gonna look fairly similar uh, this time we walk through it. So for instance, this is the home like landing site for the web page. Uh, I've got lecture notes links here. So you can click on this and you will see a PDF of the lecture notes that I use um, or have used for uh, this class. I, so one thing I will mention um, is like I said, a lot of this uh, content right now is um, the way it looked two years ago in the before time when I taught this in person. Uh, so I normally when I teach this class, there's a lot of like chalkboard work uh, we have to do. 
Uh, and in fact, I like having classrooms that have like ex expansive chalkboards because there's so much um, that, you know, basic math I have to write down uh, and lots of pictures of graphs and so on and so forth. Uh, you're actually going to have the benefit of not having to read my handwriting. Um, those who have taken my courses in the past and those who took this course in the past can tell you that I have terrible handwriting. Uh, it's, uh, I guess, of all my Achilles heels, it's the most Achilles heel of those Achilles heels. Uh, so uh, you don't have to worry about that, though. That's one benefit of the pandemic, I guess, the silver lining, uh, I guess I should say, uh, is that uh, I'm going to convert everything to digital format so you can hopefully, um, well, you will be, be able to read it. Uh, and in the general scheme of things, you'll be able to read that more, a lot more easily than you would uh, have been able to read my handwriting otherwise. But the downside of that is it takes me a while to convert these old notes into that digital format. Um, and I haven't finished the job. Uh, I started over the summer, but there's still a long way to go. So for now, uh, at least some of these notes online um, are still in their old format. I'm converting all these lecture notes into PowerPoints, um, which I will walk through. I will record myself, video record myself, walking you through those PowerPoints um, as we go. And I've got a link for those too. Uh, and these are um, videos that you can find on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, there's, uh, this is the second one actually. Uh, it's on distribution shapes. I haven't made it pro uh, public yet, but I will soon. Uh, and I still need to get the first one up there, so on and so forth. Uh, the long, long story short, I haven't gotten all the lectures converted to PowerPoint. I haven't gotten all the videos made of the uh, lectures, but they will be made uh, in time before the end of the semester. I've just got sort of the first batch up there for now. Uh, that's where you can find the lecture videos, uh, and you can watch them on YouTube again at any time you like. Um, there's also going to be a set of how-to videos. Uh, so um, there's kind of uh, these kind of go in pairs. I'm sorry, it's not super organized in the way that would make the pairing obvious, but the lecture notes and the lecture videos go together. The how-to videos go with um, this link, the R commands. Um, so this is the way it looked like two years ago, uh, but uh, basically we're going to use a software package called R, uh, which is designed for statistical analysis. It's kind of a funny name, it's just the letter R. Uh, you know, it's great for uh, a professor with an American accent like me, because I just say R. Uh, and if you want to be a pirate with it, that, that's fine too. But um, I'll say more about R as we go, but it's, um, actually, I might as well say it now. I'll load it up here. R is sort of uh, daunting or intimidating, I guess you could say, if you've never used it before, because uh, it doesn't come with this sort of nice GUI interface, the graphical user interface that we're used to using in like Microsoft Word or other um, programs, uh, where it's kind of what you see is what you get sort of thing. Um, instead, for R, um, you have to input commands. Like, we'll walk through these in a different video, but say, um, you know, here's my data for Svetlana. Svetlana is the name of my wife, who has taken this class before, believe it or not. Uh, if I want to find out the average of those numbers, that's how I get it. Uh, so you type in commands like uh, old fashioned computer programming or even modern fashion computer programming and then like it spits out numbers or pictures at you. Uh, so it takes a while to get used to that if you've never used it before. Uh, if you're used to using like Linux or Unix or MS-DOS, that sort of thing, um, this should feel relatively familiar, but if you're not, it's gonna take you a while to get comfortable with it. The reason we're using it is because it's super powerful. And in addition to that, it's free and it's kind of, you know, in, in general, kind of like a standard way to do stats in linguistics these days as well as to use R. A lot of people, the way I learned actually um, back in the day was using a package called SPSS, uh, which a lot of people still use. Um, and uh, I could teach you the basics of that uh, if you really wanted to know. I'm not going to in this class. You'd have to ask on top of this, uh, everything else we're doing. I'm going to focus on R um, just because of the reasons I mentioned. It's very powerful. It's very free, which is nice. And it's hard to do sort of more than one software package at the same time. So we're just going to focus on this one. Um, and also the kind of it winds up the two organize data in totally different ways. So if you're used to using SPSS and you want to learn R, you're going to have to sort of reorient your mind in different ways uh, to make R more feasible. Um, I am going to require you to download and install R uh, for this class. You're going to have to use it. If you want to use SPSS in the rest of your life, then go right ahead. I'm not, I can't stop you obviously, so that's your choice. Uh, but for this class, you need to use R. 
Uh, and uh, there's going to be specific demands I'll make on you and the homeworks as well. That I want you to send in like the commands you use in R because, um, and that gets a bit awkward uh, because people make mistakes while they're doing the homeworks. But guess what? I want to see all your mistakes. Uh, you don't have to be there with me as I look at your mistakes. But uh, when things go wrong, I need to know how to help you and correct your mistakes. So I have to sort of decipher what happens um, when you go through your commands, your commands in R. And actually using R is one way to make that easier for me um, so I can give you better help that way. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, that's just part of the learning process, right? Um, and so <laughs> the hard part may be that, you know, you're going to have to share those mistakes with your professor, but I don't count off for that. What I count off for is you not sharing your, your mistakes with me because uh, that is not going to help you at all. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, if I don't know what you did wrong, I can't help you at all um, figure out how to make it right. Uh, anyways, there's a lot of how-to videos um, that I'm going to have to make, a lot of different command sets that I'm going to have to show you in this class to teach you how to learn R. Uh, so these are all just uh, commands that you can use in R. Um, this is, again, structured the way that uh, it's been structured in the past. Just it's text. Each one of these sort of indented uh, lines is a command you can put into R uh, to make it do certain things. I am going to make how-to videos as well. Um, they're also loaded up to YouTube. So the basics, um, basically what I just showed you, um, uh, how to walk through those commands in R. Uh, you can watch this as well if you learn better through sort of watching videos rather than just looking at text on a website. Um, so this is all there to help you get up to speed with using R, uh, which is a big component of this class. If nothing else, even if you don't remember all the like nitty gritty statistical concepts from this class, hopefully you will remember how to use R or get you know comfortable um, working with it because that is something practical that you can carry on for however long you keep doing this in your life um, in academia or anywhere else. Okay, spending a lot of time on the website here, but hopefully it's worth it. There's other uh, links here. There'll be some readings here uh, as well. Um, I've got some textbooks for the class, but I'm gonna add additional readings here <clears throat> for you to check out too, uh, which will help flesh out some of the concepts. Uh, there's handouts, there's not much here. Oh, um, in addition to the syllabus, I have a background questionnaire. I'll send you a link to it. Um, it's no longer in PDF form, but it's just a web form. Uh, so you'll see that hopefully in your email, um, probably before you even see this video. Uh, there's a link for the homeworks. Um, I'll say more about that, but there are 11 homeworks throughout the semester, um, and they uh, form the core of your grade for the class. If you're in the 560 class, this is all you're going to be doing for your grade. Uh, there's 11 homeworks, and I drop your lowest score, so only 10 of them count. Uh, so if you happen to miss one for whatever reason, um, don't worry too much, or if you happen to get a bad grade on one of them, uh, don't worry too much, but you're going to want to get better grades on the others probably. Um, there are data sets. Uh, so one of the first things we do in this class is we all collect uh, voice onset time measures for our stops, uh, bilabial, alveolar, velar stops, uh, and then we send them in and we play around with them as a group. Uh, so uh, that's an example of a data set that I post here. So you have a link to it um, and know uh, how to access it if you ever need to. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different um, data sets we play around with though, and this is just a whole list of them. This is where you find those uh, for future reference. There's one homework where it'll be useful to use an R script. Um, and I'll explain how that works when we get there. Uh, and this last link of randomness is just my jokey way of giving you interesting stats links uh, of different ways to kind of learn uh, or look at stats uh, that I found in on the interweb over the years. Um, yeah, uh, we'll play around with a few of these. Um, some of these, unfortunately, are kind of dead links, even though they were kind of cool. There was one site called Statistics Hell, which I thought was hilarious because it was like, not everybody likes statistics, just like not everybody likes syntax, right? Uh, and um, if you felt like you were in hell in statistics, it was like a book, textbook designed for that feeling. Um, but this, it's called Discovering Statistics now, and it looks like it kind of has uh, like some sort of Empire Strikes Back graphic here, uh, but it's a lot nicer themed. Uh, but in case, you know, um, this might be helpful, I've got a link to it for you. Uh, there's also like the Guess the Correlation game. Is this still working? Yes, it is. Uh, we'll play this. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> we'll play that later, but it's fun. It's just random stuff that um, you might find enriching or useful for your statistics 
in linguistics experience as we go through the semester. There's also a link here for checking your grades. That's not up and updated and running yet. Um, but uh, if you want to check your grades um, throughout the semester, that's where you can. Uh, it'll every grade you get for your homeworks is just going to be a letter grade, you know, A, B, C, whatever. Um, and so you'll that'll help you sort of figure out what the value of, of the grades is um, as we go through the semester. In case you're worried about your grade, um, I always want to say to my students, like, don't worry about your grades too much. Just worry about the process of learning. But of course, that's unrealistic. Everybody worries about their grades. So try to at least find some balance there between just like figuring out the material and like also worrying a little bit about your grade, but not worrying too much. Because if you stick with it, it should all work out in the end. Um, like I said, there's a textbook for this course. It's um, authored by Keith Johnson, who um, is a uh, former advisor of mine. Um, and I've been using it ever since I first taught this class. Uh, and maybe you can tell because the thing is falling apart uh, a little bit. Uh, I've used it quite a bit over the years. Uh, it's good, uh, and I think it's helpful from a linguistics perspective, um, more than maybe from a stats perspective, but that's what it's written for. It's quantitative methods and linguistics. Uh, and this is a required text for, textbook for the course because I don't think you could survive in this course without some sort of required text to work from. Uh, so this is gonna be um, our common foundation for the whole course. So uh, get this textbook if you haven't gotten yet uh, and keep up with the readings because they're gonna be helpful. Um, yeah, that being said, um, it is more sort of from a linguistics angle, from a stats angle. So it can also be helpful if you find um, a more stats-based textbook. And back in the old days when I first taught this textbook, I found... So yeah, like I said, when you start getting into stats for research, you kind of like wind up starting to collect stats uh, books or like knowledge from various sources because like each different perspective kind of helps you sort of like see the whole a little bit better. Uh, so uh, somewhere along the way, I, I picked up this book called Introduction to the Practice of Stati Statistics. This is the third edition, which came out in 99, uh, which was shortly after I took that first stats course um, and was still kind of like trying to feel like I wanted to learn more from it, more about it. Um, yeah, so it gives you stuff like this. It's, you know, produced with like 1999 technology. Um, and I think that's actually valuable and uh, because it's not so like computer based, it's more just like concept based. Um, and it's also a useful textbook, um, not to give you too much of an ad for it because I'm not requiring it, but it's also useful um, <coughs> just because it provides sort of the basics uh, of the math of like how the stats concepts work. Um, and so I think it's useful if you can find a, a textbook like this, um, out there, one that you feel comfortable with that to can kind of give you that mathematical foundation, um, as we go along. Uh, I will reference this to some extent in the class. Um, the tricky part is that, um, I used to assign this, but, uh, like I said, this is the third edition from 1999 and each time they keep updating it. And, uh, every time I look at the new updates, it's like, uh, they're just trying to be more like cool and hip with this textbook rather than just like, here are the boring basics, so let's learn them, uh, which is really kind of what you need. Um, and unfortunately, you know, this is the, the hard part of learning is that a lot of it, it's just gotta be boring, otherwise it's not gonna sink in. So uh, like when I first taught this 10 years ago, I have this version, the seventh edition, which is updated and yeah. Uh, I'm not a big believer, I guess, <laughs> in universal progress. Like when things get changed and updated, sometimes they get better, sometimes they get worse. Uh, and in this particular textbook's case, I guess I'd say I'd find it not as good uh, as it used to be. So that's why I don't assign it anymore. But if you can find a version of it or a textbook like it, um, I'd recommend that rather than require it. Uh, this book came out a few years ago. It's called How to Do Linguistics with R uh, by Natalia Levshna. Uh, and this is very good um, in terms of what it is trying to accomplish. Uh, I just think for our purposes, it's a little too complex, um, more complex than we need uh, for basically beginning students of stats. So I don't uh, assign it, I don't uh, require it either, um, but it's recommended if you wanna get more in depth uh, with some of these concepts and some of the uh, commands you can use in R to do statistics, it's very good at that level, but I'd recommend it more as sort of like next step up once you're ready to take that step. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about textbooks. Uh, like I said, we're going to uh, focus on this one um, as our required textbook throughout the semester. 
Uh, and uh, I got readings in the course schedule down here at the bottom that all refer to that uh, textbook, along with some of those additional readings that I posted to the website. Um, you can see that in this column here. Uh, okay, so usually about one reading per week. Not too much to overwhelm you because we've got so many other things to worry about as it is. Uh, this information is hopefully already obvious, but just to make it explicit, um, the material for this course will be delivered asynchronously. All lectures for the course have been video recorded or will be video recorded. <laughs> I guess if it's still up five years from now, I don't have to worry about that, but it, they're gonna be posted to YouTube. Links for the videos will be provided to students on the website throughout the semester, um, along with links to the corresponding lecture notes. So you all have that at your disposal anytime you need it. Uh, and again, this can get a little complicated. So hopefully being able to review like that at your leisure uh, should make it easier to digest. Uh, I got a little note here about how things are still kind of crazy because um, we're kind of like half in person and half not. And I decided to take this online uh, for various reasons. Uh, so it's less than ideal. And there's also the general like health concerns that we all have outside of school too. And, you know, economic, whatever. Let's just try to work with it as best we can. Uh, and uh, if something is not working, I will try to be adaptive and adjust to something that might work better for everybody. Uh, so if there's a serious problem in your life or with the way this class is working, please Feel free to communicate with me about that uh, because um, this is still a, basically a new way to learn and a new way to teach for everybody, even though we've kind of done it once before, but I haven't done this course before uh, in this format. So let me know if it's not working. Uh, there is a section here on technology requirements, uh, which I think is, uh, it's well, yeah, <laughs> whoops. It's boilerplate, boilerplate to the extent that I copied this from another syllabus that I shouldn't have. Uh, but this is what you need technology wise to be able to uh, participate in this class. So hopefully you have all that stuff. Uh, and there's also R, um, which you will need to download and install on your laptop. So I'm going to mosey on over to this link and um, just show you where you can get it from. And I will say, please uh, update this or download this uh, as soon as you can, because sometimes it can take a long time. Uh, so th this is, like I said, it's free open source software. In theory, you know, if you get super sophisticated with R and stats, you could actually contribute to the R project with your own um, sort of software contribution. Uh, we're probably not gonna get anywhere close to that in this class, uh, but to start off with, you at least need to download and install it. Um, I've got a video about how to do this uh, already loaded up to YouTube. I'll provide you with a link to that on the uh, sort of how to section of the website, uh, but it's not up there yet. Uh, but in case you're curious how to do that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and hopefully the video would make clear up any ambiguities there um, that you might have. Uh, okay, so I'm not gonna say anything more about R. I've said quite a bit about R already, but it's gonna be one of the main focuses foci of this class. Um, right, so moving on to grading, I mentioned this as well, homework. Um, both courses, the undergrad and grad version of this course uh, are primarily homework focused. I used to do a final exam or a midterm exam too for this class, but that's a bad idea. Uh, I've assigned homework and I try to assign it well ahead of time so that you have enough time to sort of process the information necessary to do the homework well. Some of these homeworks can take a bit of time, so try to get started on them as soon as I assign them. That's why I give them to you relatively early. And again, I wanna know what you did to do the homework. The process is just as important, if not more important than the product in these cases. Um, yeah, so one difference between the two courses is that uh, the students in Link 660 will also be expected to answer fundamental comprehension questions on top of the general exercises you have to do for each homework. Uh, so Ling 560, you're excused from that. You can do it optionally if you want to, if you're an undergrad, uh, but otherwise I want the Ling 660 students to think a little bit more deeply about the concepts we're applying in each exercise. And that's the main idea is that I present concepts to you in the lectures and then the videos, and then I want you to try to apply it to mostly linguistic data 
through each exercise. Although since I am a, just a general geek who likes numbers, uh, I'm going to draw numbers from other sources as well, like the weather or baseball, or maybe in this current context, I might grab some coronavirus numbers or something like that. Um, so you can see how stats works uh, in a variety of different fields, just to kind of mix things up. Uh, but it will primarily be about language and the results of linguistic research, that sort of data that you get from running experiments. Um, yeah, so, uh, right. And also I'll mention, like I, I said earlier on that my wife Svetlana took this course. This is actually the course where we met <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, and um, she uh, is from Ukraine. Uh, I'm from the US originally, if you haven't figured that out yet, but uh, we come from different sort of cultural worlds. And like when I started talking about baseball, she, she had no clue, but she wasn't like feeling comfortable enough to ask like, what the heck is this baseball thing? Uh, so um, that was one reason why she eventually dropped the class. Uh, she still married me, so it wasn't that bad, I guess. But uh, if you don't understand like some of the references I'm making, um, please just ask. I know there are people from all over in this class. So uh, it's fair to not know everything that I know because I come from my own random part of the world and we might not share uh, a general comprehension. Uh, but I'm gonna try to make this as accept, uh, accessible as possible to everybody, primarily through language. Um, yeah, it's acceptable to work with other students on the homework exercises as long as you make it clear who you've worked with when you turn in your assignment. I don't want you though to just copy what somebody else did for the assignment. You must write up your answers independently uh don't just copy what somebody else has written down and that's where it comes in handy for you to show me your console uh the commands you used in r to do the homework because then i can see like what's going on in your mind as you're trying to figure these things out um i've got this note here about how i will drop your lowest homework score we said that before late homeworks are only going to be accepted in cases of documented uh medical or family emergencies actually i need to uh, get rid of that um I'll just say personal because uh, it's too much of a hassle these days to get documentation of medical stuff. So if you have a problem that's getting in your way from uh, getting in your way when it comes to sort of submitting your homework on time, uh, let me know that as soon as possible, please. Um, I can be flexible to some extent with that, um, but if it's a recurring problem, then we're gonna have to have a discussion. Uh, yeah, but just communicate. That's usually the best way to kind of solve problems as human beings. We should know this as linguists, right? Um, anyways, in addition to the homework, uh, the grad students in Link 660 will have to write a short term paper uh, that expands on the knowledge and analytical skills developed in this course. The paper can cover one of a variety of topics. For instance, students could investigate a statistical method that is not explicitly covered in the lectures for the course and learn more about how it has been applied to linguistics research. There's a lot of new methods out there which are cool and exciting and currently being used in linguistics. And they're usually fairly complex and sophisticated, so we don't have time to get to an understanding of them in a beginning course like this. But you could focus on them and sort of figure out more or figure out better how they work and then describe that to me um, in a short term paper. Alternatively, a student could apply the techniques learned over the semester to an independent statistical analysis of a set of original language based data. Say you have some data you did in a project a while back uh, and you use maybe a method which was, you know, at least different from the way it should have been done or the way you wanted it to be done and you could sort of re apply an analysis to that data uh, that's different from the original analysis and learn something new about what you uh, got from that experiment. That's uh, okay. Also, a student could learn how to work with an R module that we have not used during the semester and then lead the class through a tutorial on how to use that feature of R. Um, so I, yeah, I've got this lead the class through a tutorial. I got to change that up. Um, and I'm to something like describe to me how to use that feature of R um, because I used to, have everybody give a presentation, at least all the grad students give a presentation about what they learned. Um, but given the current circumstances uh, and the technology involved in doing that, I'm gonna let you not do that this semester, uh, unfortunately, because, um, well, yeah, there's timing considerations there and then there's technology considerations as well. So I just want you to write this up in a paper, uh, but part of what you can do is learn um, just a whole new sort of feature of R. Like I said, part of what we're learning in this class is how to use R. So if you learn how to use R in a new special way, uh, it's totally fine to report that new knowledge to me in this final project. 
I'm also open to other ideas for final term projects. Please see me if you have an idea that you think would be suitable. More details on the expectations for this project will be provided as we proceed through the term. Uh, and again, this is where communication comes into play. I'm going to go down here to the course schedule. And I don't have this um, explicitly listed here, but uh, you may notice uh, on the course schedule that there's a reading week break here in the middle of November. Uh, so I'll point this out now and we'll remind you about it later. But uh, when we come back from that reading week break, I would like you to give me some heads up about what your topic is for your uh, course project if you're in the 660 version of this class. Um, if you do that sooner than November 16th, that's great too. Uh, usually the sooner you get started on a project, the easier it is to finish um, and the better it becomes in the process. But definitely by November 16th, communicate with me what you're thinking about for your final term project so it doesn't all, you know, uh, bump up on you at the very end of the semester. Uh, that's not the word I wanted to use, some clump up, but I can't think of it on the spur of the moment. Hopefully you know what I mean. Um, pile up on you, that's it. <laughs> okay, uh, my wife also loves those verb particle constructions in English. It's so random. Uh, anyways, uh, that's what I've got for um, course assessment. There's also a grading scale for this course, which is um, the typical American university grading scale used. Um, but this is what these grades are valued, uh, valued in my estimation. Um, so it may look daunting if you're used to sort of the Canadian scale, but it shouldn't turn out to be that way. If you get an A on a homework, it's basically worth 95%, uh, and it fits into this slot here um, in the grading scale. Uh, so on and so forth for all the other grades. I don't round up in calculating final grades. I'm not going to say anything more about that. Uh, lastly, we have this course schedule. Uh, and there's this usual caveat about how this is an ideal course of future action and it's therefore likely to change before the end of the semester, especially since I haven't gotten all the lectures recorded yet. Uh, right now, I think I'm up to about week five. Uh, so we'll go from there or I'll go from there and you'll get started on week one here, uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but anyways, um, this is my best guess based on how the course has played out in previous incarnations about how much we can cover in each week. Uh, got a little bit of um, a change up thrown at us uh, this year because we have this new holiday that falls on a Thursday for National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna cover as much material in that week. I mean, generally speaking, you can cover this material anytime you're ready to. Um, but uh, since there's no class that Thursday, uh, there's not going to be a lecture that Thursday either that I'll expect you to cover. Um, and you may note I've got these homeworks listed over here on the right hand column. Um, for these, um, they're all listed uh, next to the Thursday slot. But since we're asynchronous this semester, I'm going to make the homeworks due on Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. for each week where they're due. Uh, and usually about one homework is due per week with a few uh, gaps here and there. Um, yeah, uh, so don't freak out if you see this due on a Thursday. It's actually due on a Friday. I've got that note here as well, and I'll try to communicate that pretty explicitly through email with you guys as we go along. Uh, and it's also going to be listed on the homeworks too, right? Um, yeah, so that's mostly what I have to say about the um, course schedule. Uh, we're going to try to, like I said, try to cover all the primary like techniques that you might be expected to use um, as a linguistics researcher. And it goes relatively fast, so let me know if something's not sinking in. And I try to get all the way up to uh, mixed effects models here by the end of the semester, um, which is a very prevalent method that many people use in uh, linguistics experiments these days. Uh, but I found that it's kind of hard to get there and also cover all the sort of foundational things that you should also know on top of that. Uh, so that winds up being some bonus material at the end of the semester. Um, I walk you through a tutorial which is written by a guy named Winter. It's, it's not me. It's another linguist named Winter. Uh, and my name is Winters anyways. Uh, but it, it's a pretty, pretty good basic tutorial. Um, and uh, But you can cover it uh, basically if you would like to go that far with the material at the end of the se uh, semester. I know by the middle of December, we're all usually kind of worn out. Uh, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, and other than that, I don't think I have a whole lot to say about this course outline. I'll just remind you for the undergrads, uh, the big difference is that your grade is based on just the homeworks by themselves. Um, and I got to tweak some of this again, like the way I tweaked this one. Uh, yeah, so just focus on that. Um, and I think I'm going to stop there before I run out of space on my hard drive. 
Uh, and then I'll load this up tonight and send you an email and let you know that we're ready to roll. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to this. I've kind of actually been thinking for a long time, this course might benefit from being sort of inverted where like the lectures are online and then like when we meet together, we just talk about how to do the exercises. It's not gonna be quite like that this semester, but it's gonna be a push in that direction. And hopefully it'll help you sort of digest that material, uh, the conceptual stuff that's in the lectures, uh, which, um, is not super easy to get a handle on because you have to think a different way from the way we normally think in linguistics. Okay, so again, uh, if anything is confusing, if you have any questions, if there's anything you'd like to know more about, uh, please get in touch with me. Uh, that's the best way to understand things better, uh, at least for this class, right? Uh, so I'll be happy. I'll be looking forward to um, talking with you all uh, as we go along. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next for lecture number one on the basics of statistics. So see you then.